Welcome back to the Top Shell Literary Editions. This is episode 33. Once again, thank you for joining me, and I hope you're enjoying the series. Um, I really do like enjoying, um, like enjoying, <laughs> man, for literary editions, uh, I can't speak good. Uh, I do enjoy sharing uh, these books with you. Uh, my, my tastes vary, my interests vary, um, but there's some of my favorite books that I'll do some deeper dives on. Um, my name is Ernest Whiteman III. I'm a Northern Rappo filmmaker, artist, writer, and media educator. So uh, books sort of permeate my life in all of those sections. And today's book is The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee by um, David Truer. Uh, this is sort of a um, both a response to the, the idea of burying my heart at Wounded Knee and another one of the uh, many um, indigenous uh, histories on the United States that have been coming out of recently. Um, and the reason why he chose this title was uh, in response to uh, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee, which sort of signifies the end of Native American history in most, um, in most people's minds. But um, he wanted to show that um, Native history still continues up to today, and it is still continuing today. Um, so the heartbeat of wounded knee uh, covers the space from, I believe, uh, 1890 up until contemporary times. And, um, I've started reading this. I've gotten past the first chapter. Um, but again, my interests are, uh, are always, uh, are blown by the wind. And, uh, at some point uh, I wanted to pick this up. So what I did to make it easier on myself, uh, I went and picked up the paperback edition. It's smaller, it's lighter, and um, I thought, you know, in my travels I can really uh, dig deep as I go around to uh, my classrooms across the city. Um, sitting on the train, I would have plenty of time to really deep dive into this book, and then uh, the quarantine happened. <laughs> and uh, I've picked it up a couple of times, but um, this is a, an issue I have not with this book in particular, but with um, printing houses that do this particular thing, is what they do is that they take uh, the hardback edition and they, what they do is they basically shrink it down so it'll fit into the paperback edition rather than reformat the thing and have possibly uh, longer or shorter books. Um, this one I wanted to have the exact same page count. And I've checked this page after page uh, it starts with the same word and it ends with the same word on these pages. So they really shrunk it down and that made it more difficult for me to read and um, therefore losing my interest in the middle of reading it. Because if the print is so tiny, um, then, um, you know, suddenly you need the reading glasses. So now that I have my reading glasses, I'll probably dive back into it. Um, but... I would still recommend this book um, because it, alternate perspectives on U.S. history is always a great, great thing. Uh, you shouldn't be married to a singular version. Um, just as they say the United States is a melting pot, so is its history. Um, so, uh, The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee uh, by David Schreuer. It wouldn't hurt, you know, citizens to learn. Uh, the, United, the history of the United States from the First Nations perspective, from the people who were here prior and are still here today. So that's the book on the top shelf today. Um, thanks for joining me. I'll catch you next time.